The Sri Lankan civil war was one of the most tragic and drawn-out conflicts of modern times. Over 30 years, Tamil separatists from the north waged a guerrilla war against the government, which resulted in around 100,000 deaths. Since the war ended in 2009, areas of the north have remained closed as remnants of the conflict, notably indiscriminate landmines, remain. However, the 2009 ceasefire has brought peace to the region. The Mahaya Vidyalaya School in the war-torn North Sri Lankan town of Mankalam has been selected as the site of an exciting new laureate-sponsored project, which aims to help this region recover from 30 years of conflict. The project recently received a visit from cricket superstar Sir Ian Botham and Ashes-winning former England captain Michael Vaughan, who came to see firsthand both the damage done to the area by the conflict and the hope for change that is provided by the new project. The difference is that the community down the south was devastated by the tsunami. Up here in the north, it's been devastated by war. Obviously, I want to see how both projects uh, are progressing. One uh, very much in its infancy, one now starting to grow. This is not Ian's first time in Sri Lanka. In 2005, just weeks after the tsunami devastated the southern part of the country, he became involved with the grassroots Sinagama facility. The project rose from the destruction of the tsunami to provide hope to a devastated community and Ian's been returning to witness his progress regularly ever since. I know how proud Ian is to be involved in Sri Lanka. Um, you know, I know how proud he is to have seen the development down south. When you get the chance to come here and see something uh, that you started and to see how it's grown, um, it is moving. The success of the Sinagama project will be a template for the new facilities in the north and is a local answer to local problems. I think it's about awareness, and that's what we're here to, is to create awareness. You need to do something to tell people it's actually here. Come and have a look. To have Beefy and Vaughan here, it's absolutely huge. Uh, I still can't quite believe it that we've got them up here. Even in this part of the country that's been essentially cut off from the rest of the world for so long, everyone knows these guys, you know, they're taking photos of them. They're, they're huge celebrities. Despite years of fighting, there is one subject that can unify Sri Lankans, cricket. Today's Sri Lankan cricket team is considered one of the world's best, recently reaching the finals of the ICC's 2011 Cricket World Cup. The story of the success behind the Sinagama project is remarkable. It began in 1999 and has grown beyond all expectations into one of the country's best sporting complexes. Sinagama has even begun to produce some of the top athletes in Sri Lanka, including a player in the national under-19 cricket squad. The foundation takes a broad view of its role in society and is helping the local community at all levels. It also encourages children to stay motivated on the sports field and in the classroom. Education is very important. It's not only the sport. So every four months we need them to give uh, us a report of how their education activities go, goes on. Sinagama is such a fantastic facility and the idea is that we do replicate that but we almost want to do it on a bigger and better scale here. In a special surprise, to inspire the audience and demonstrate reconciliation, Sri Lanka's number one cricket player, Mutai Muralitharan, himself of Tamil origins, joined in to announce the plans. North is a very difficult place where tsunami, everyone wants to give a hand because devastation they saw all the people. North is a 30-year war and nobody knew that place. Until you go and see, it is more flattened than the tsunami. Muralitharan's local origins and his commitment to the project helped overcome difficulties in finding and securing the site for development in an area badly hit in the final months of the Civil War. His use of his own sporting celebrity helped achieve what many thought would be impossible. The children who lived, uh, started their life in, say, 90s and 80s, they haven't seen electricity, they haven't seen TV, they haven't seen anything. A lot of those kids were child soldiers. Those kids two years ago were probably running around with AK-47s and grenades. All they've been used to is war. We wanted to get the children out, uh, out of their shells, so to say. You know, they have been seeing lots of fighting and um, gunfire, and that has been really traumatizing. Many of the children who will benefit from these facilities have known nothing but conflict for their whole lives and have much to gain from the project. Hopes are high, and not just for what the project could do for the children of the area, but also what a success story could do to help unite a nation afflicted by conflict for so long. Now emerging out of isolation, the potential of the untapped cricket talent in the north is clear for all to see. I think uh, we are going to find even better sportsmen in the north because 30 years of war, civil war, has really put down those kids 
but I know the talent is immense there. There's going to be millions of Sri Lankans playing and, and beating England like they did in the World Cup. But we actually need some help as well. There's always talent out there, you just got to give it the chance, give it a little shove and let that kid come through and express himself. Yeah!